The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, it's 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 nighttime, January 1st, putting in a lot of work on these videos. Like This is like the 15th video I've done today. It's crazy, but um, yeah, big. it's a big year for heavyweight boxing. It's a big year for the heavyweight division. And I wanted to speak on a fight that I've been talking about actually since 2022, maybe even longer than that. And uh, that's the that's the fight we're, we're probably going to wind up getting at some point this year between Anthony Joshua and Philip Hergovich for the vacant IBF title because it's fully expected because the IBF already mandated that if Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk have a rematch, which they probably will because the money will be too good and there's a rematch clause in the contract, their belt will not be on the line for the rematch. And it will automatically go vacant. So I would anticipate that Hergovich and AJ are going to fight sometime in the second quarter of 2024. That's just my educated guess, right? And, you know, due to Anthony Joshua's recent performance against Out of All In, where he looked like the AJ of old, like he looked the Anthony Joshua of that Papa Vetkin, um, a lot of people are looking at that fight as a complete one sided domination for Anthony Joshua. And they're completely. Riding off Philip Hergovich's chances of, of defeating Anthony Joshua just because of the of, of, of that performance against Valine. And obviously Hergovich hasn't, you know, he's been winning. He, and, and I thought he's performed well against Dempsey McKean. And I thought he did more than enough to beat Zhang. But a lot of people, uh, the Zhang fight for them was a deal breaker. They feel like Hergovich that night showed his level and that he would not be able to compete with the top heavyweights in the division. Well, I'm here to tell you guys, and I got I got four reasons. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you guys five reasons, actually. Five reasons why Philip Hergovich is going to beat the brakes off Anthony Joshua when and if they fight. And I got to say if, right, because to, to be told, Anthony Joshua still has that wild to find his back pocket. They can do the, 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 they can always pull Francis and Gano out of nowhere. Like Anthony Joshua can find an out out of finding Philip Hergovich if he doesn't really want to fight him. But if he does fight him, I'm going to break it down to you guys why he will not be victorious and uh, he, he will lose in the Croatian sensation. Now, Animo, Philip Hargrich will be the IBF heavyweight champion of the world at some point during this year. So we'll start off with uh, reason number one. And it's quite simple. It's quite it's quite simple. Number one, Philip Hergovich is tougher than Anthony Joshua. Now, I know boxing isn't a tough man competition. It's not about being tough. It's not about any of that. It's about using your mind. But when you get two guys at that world-class level and one fighter asks the other fighter some serious questions, you know, and puts them under some severe pressure, there's going to be moments in fights where your grit and your toughness is going to be tested. And if past and prior history tells us anything about Anthony Joshua, you know, I like him. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of his. One of my favorite boxers out there. But when, when he fought Andy Ruiz in the, in the first fight, he just didn't have the, the toughness to, to grind it out and find a way to win. Um, you know, when he's fought guys like even like Vladimir Klitschko, yeah, he, he found a way to win that fight. Vladimir Klitschko was a little older, so you know maybe maybe it, it was a scenario of maybe Klitschko just, just didn't have the ammunition to, to to put Anthony Joshua away, but he looked damn good in that fight. Um, you look at the Usyk fights. I mean, I thought the Usyk rematch was probably one of the best Anthony Joshua's that ever was. Usyk was just on another level, um, and he gave he listen he gave everything he could that fight. But every time I've ever seen Anthony Joshua in a fight where some serious questions, pr pretty much after the after the Klitschko fight, any fight he had where he was asked serious questions of himself, got punched in his mouth and had to, you know, dig deep and show that he was equally as tough as, as, as his opposition, he wound up um, not being able to come out victorious. Now, when, in the fights where, you know, you got to, like, like like the Andy Reid rematch where he was out of shape, you know, he was finally out of boxing. Out of all in, didn't have no power to trouble him. Um, fights where Anthony Joshua is able to impose his will on the fight early on and not really be tested, He's, he's been able to win, but I have, I've really never seen him win a fight, probably since the Klitschko fight, where he's had to actually dig deep and, and show that, hey, I can overcome this and be tougher than my opponent. And, you know, so I just feel like Philip Hergovich is a, is, a, is, a, is a tougher fighter than Anthony Joshua. Look at look at the Zhang fight, right? People like to say Hergovich lost that fight. I, I personally don't think he did. I, I thought he won the majority of the round in the second half of the fight because Zhang was blown out of his ass and just refused to throw any punches, right? He couldn't throw any punches because his conditioning is not that great. But um, look at what Zhang did to Joe Joyce and how he just butchered him twice in a row, back to back, straight two, two demolition jobs. Wasn't the case of Hergovich. Hergovich made some adjustments, outboxed him, 
became the volume puncher for about a good five to six rounds and was able to box way to a very close and controversial decision, a decision, but he won the fight. I thought he won the fight by a point. I thought he did barely enough to win, right? So I just think from what he's shown in his career thus far, Hergovich is the, the tougher of the two men. So there's that. That, that. That's reason number one. Reason number two, and why, why should you go to screen share for this one? Reason number two, Philip Hergovich is the more well-conditioned heavyweight and can throw more punches than AJ if necessary. Now, before I go to the county box numbers and we, we get into the mathematics of, of, of their punch output, and I know this heavyweight boxing is not about punch output, but you got to understand something about Anthony Joshua. What, what, the, the, the kind of fighters that have defeated him over the years, Andy Ruiz and, and Alexander Usyk, they have two things in common, and it's the fact that they were able to, to, to be the volume punchers and out-volume AJ, um, sometimes as an aggressive counter puncher, sometimes it's just as a, as a pure volume punch, but nonetheless outwork him and, and, and make those – those those big bulky muscles and the, and and, the, and that bodybuilder physique of his tire out right. So I just I, I know for a fact Hergovich is a more well conditioned fighter than heavyweight a, a heavyweight than Anthony Joshua, and he can throw more punches than Anthony Joshua if it needs if needs be. And history tells that. Like like let, let's just run through the history right quick so you guys know like the histrionics of their punch output. So look look at this Zhang fight right. Hergovich in the Zhang fight. Through 705 punches, which for a heavyweight is a lot. That's a lot of punches for a heavyweight. Most heavyweights can't throw up, up to up to that level of um punches. So again, he was able to in this fight make the adjustment from being a guy that boxed more pasty behind the jab to being more of a volume puncher. Hergovich became a volume puncher throughout the whole second half of that fight. And he out hustled Jang. It wasn't a matter of oh, he landed the the more uh, he it wasn't that he landed more a higher percentage of his shots. It was it was just that he just outworked them. He found a way to outwork them. And outland him, and it wasn't pretty, but he got the job done. And even on his worst night, he won. And I and I feel like that's a sign of a really good fighter. And I think that in this fight, where a lot of people are going to be, you know, gassed up about Anthony Joshua and his performance against Otto Ballin and saying that he's back and looking at Ben Davis and like he's the new trainer of the year and this kind of stuff like that, I just think people are making a great mistake of underestimating Hergovich's work rate. Um, he showed you what he could do in the Jank fight, but people were too busy about crying robbery that, that they couldn't properly appreciate the performance and the adjustments he made and, and the things he did against a very dangerous guy like Zhang, uh, Jele Zhang. So there's that. So look, remember, remember that number, 705 punches on Hergovich. Because look, if you if you go to Joshua's career, in the Usyk fight, I, in the rematch, these are, these are the numbers from the Usyk rematch. And I think this is actually the best Anthony Joshua, there's, or one of the best Anthony Joshua there's ever been. And he threw about as many punches in that fight as I've ever seen him throw in his, in his career. He threw 492 punches that fight, right? So 492 in the Usyk fight. In the Jermaine Franklin fight from earlier this year, he threw 376 punches in the Jermaine Franklin fight. He got criticized a lot because people thought he was throwing enough punches in the Jermaine Franklin fight. Um, but 376 is the number for Jermaine Franklin. If you go to the fight with... Uh, Oh, that's also Franklin. This is all Frank. That's also Franklin as well. And then if you go to the fight with Vladimir Klitschko, right? Because I feel like I feel like Vladimir has the closest style to Philip Hergovich that that Joshua was fought, and you saw how he struggled with it. And mind you, unlike Vladimir, Hergovich is not in his forties. He's not coming off of a, a layoff. Um, you know, he's, he's 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 younger. He's younger than AJ. He's fresh than AJ. AJ is actually the old man in this fight compared to Hergovich, if, if we're being honest. So uh, in that fight. You saw Klitschko land. Uh, you saw Anthony Joshua threw 355 punches in that fight. And if you look at rounds, what was it, five and six, when Joshua when Joshua got put on his ass, his punch output dramatically dipped. And it wasn't until maybe like, you know, the tenth, the ninth, tenth round where he started to kind of find his 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 work rate again in that fight. So um, history shows us that the guy that is the more well conditioned fighter, incapable of throwing more punches. If it should come down to that, is Philip Hergovich. And obviously, one punch in the headway division can end everything. But I just think that at that world-class level, conditioning does play a big factor in how these fights go. And I just think Hergovich is the more conditioned uh, fighter that's willing to go to deeper, darker plays than AJ is. Right? And he showed that in the Zhang fight. So that's reason number two. Reason number three, why Hergovich is going to beat Anthony Joshua one day fight. Anthony Joshua has an inferior right hand to Philip Hergovich. Yes, I said it. He does have an inferior right hand to Philip Hergovich. Philip Hergovich, quiet as kept, has one of the best straight right hands in the heavyweight division. Um, I actually think his straight right hand is a, a little bit better than his jab. Um, his jab is good. His jab is improving with Ronnie Shields. And his jab is – he knows how to set up the right hand. And, and, and if you look at 
the Dempsey McKean fight, he actually uh, started throwing a, a, a new punch that he really didn't throw a whole lot of uh, most of his career, which is the overhand right. So now he's now he's, he's got a left hook, he's got a jab, he's got a right hand, he's got an overhand right. He's a he's a more versatile puncher. Anthony Joshua is a great combination puncher. I think Anthony Joshua will have an edge in speed, um, but I think that'll only play a factor for the early rounds of the fight. Uh, as this fight goes on, you know this fight will come down to conditioning. This fight will come down to positioning. And who can set up their, their big shots? Anthony Joshua has a, a, a really good uppercut. He's got a nice left hook. And um, against Otto Valine, his straight right hand was great. You know, but Otto Valine didn't really have anything to trouble Anthony Joshua with. This is a different uh, proposition than Otto Valine or Jermaine Franklin or Robert Hellenius. Hergerbridge is uh, six foot seven or six foot six and a half, tall, young, in his prime, you know. Uh, Great right hand. I mean, this is a this is way different for AJ. Um, Anthony Joshua to beat Hergovich is gonna have to take away his right hand, and I just don't see it. Um, Anthony Joshua likes to at his best. Anthony Joshua is a guy that likes to operate in the mid range, um, and sometimes on the outside, and that's gonna be Christmas coming early for Hergovich. Hergovich is gonna be in position to hit him pretty much whenever you when he from round. I'm gonna say from like round five on up. He's going to be able to hit AJ whenever he wants because Anthony Joshua is not going to have the conditioning to to be to to, to get out the way of that right hand, and it's going to be a very very big problem for him. Now, reason number four, and this one might be a bit—I don't know if this is a, a controversial um, take, but this is my opinion. All right, Philip Hergovich is the hardest puncher Anthony Joshua has ever fought in his professional boxing career. Now let's let, let, let's 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 really unpack this one, right? Because people may say. What are you talking about, true school? You're just now now we know you're being biased, Hergovich. Now we know that 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 you just like you're part of the Philip Hergovich fan club, right? So let, let, let's let's look at it, right? So when you talk about Philip Hergovich, he's 17 and 0, 14 knockouts. Only, only three men that have made it made it the distance with, with Philip Hergovich, and that's uh Jili Zhang. Um, you know, Jili Zhang and who else? Who else on the distance with Hergovich? Jili Zhang, Kevin Johnson, the always tough Kevin Johnson. And who else went the distance with Hergovich? It's not many people. It's not many people. It's Jili Zhang, Kevin Johnson, and who else? I'm not gonna look for it right now. But look, the point I want to make is the greater point I want to and uh, yeah, the point the greater point I want to make about Hergovich and Sean Turner. So Sean Turner, Jili Zhang, and um, you know, Kevin Johnson, those are the three guys that got that got out the that got out the, the distance with Hergovich. But I want to make a point to you guys. So look. Hergovich's pro debut, he fought Rafael Zumbano Love. Now, Zumbano Love, this is a guy in Zumbano Love, not a great fighter, but for your pro debut, this is a, a great guy to be fighting because Zumbano Love's been around for a long time. Um, he's fought, you know, a lot of guys. He fought Valin. Like, look, he's been stopped seven times, 18 losses. Uh, he took out of Valin the distance. You see, who else did he take? Who else did he take? He took Andy Ruiz the distance, right? Took Andy Ruiz the distance. Anthony Joshua stopped him in two rounds. But Philip Hergovich stopped him in one round, so they have a common. That's a common point with AJ. Hergovich did better than him than AJ did, right? Um, this guy also took Shannon Briggs a distance when Shannon Briggs was on the comeback trail. He took uh, took some guys a distance. You know, good good solid guy. Hergovich fought him in his debut, so that right there tells you anything you need to know. When AJ fought him, it was AJ's what twelve pro fight. So Anthony Hergovich literally fought somebody in his pro debut that Anthony Joshua fought in his twelve pro fight. So that right there tells you the kind of puncher and the kind of experience level Hergovich has had coming into the pros, right? Stopping a guy like Rafael Zumbano Love in his first professional fight. I mean, they wanted to stop guys like Pavel Sauer, Tom Little, you know, some good, some decent guys for that stage of your career. Um, stopped Amir Mansour, who was a good veteran. Now, Kevin Johnson, another guy that's a common opponent with AJ. AJ stopped Kevin Johnson. Hergovich didn't. Not, I think Anthony Joshua was like one of only two people, two people to ever stop. Uh, Kevin Johnson, but then you, you see his career. Uh, stopped Eric Molina in three rounds. Uh, granted, it was an older Eric Molina, but still. Um, and then look, Dempsey McKean. Uh, I, I, I want to really highlight Dempsey McKean because Dempsey McKean, man, I, I got to give him credit. This is a guy in McKean who he's been in there with some decent guys. Like he fought Johnny Rice, and you know, he's, been, he, he's a ranked heavyweight. When he fought Hergovich, I mean, 22 fight veteran contender. Guy that was um, athletic at that size, knew how to survive, knew how to tie uh, tie up Hergovich and kind of salt away the fight. And to his credit, McKean got Hergovich to the 12th round 
But Hergovich showed his condition. He showed that his power can carry to the 12th round and got him up out of there. So when I look at Hergovich, the puncher, I want to analyze him as a puncher. You know, the fights against guys like Zumbano Love, the fights against guys like um, McKean, um, and even to a degree, the Zhang Jalei fight, the Zhili Zhang fight, Zhang wasn't able to come forward and be as effective as he wanted to um, in the latter stages of that fight. And a lot of that was because of the fact that Hergovich did have some 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 thump behind those punches he was throwing, even though they were like, they looked like they were shooting accommodations. You know, he wasn't walking through his punches the way he was walking through Joyce's punches. And that says something because Joe Joyce, you know, he had, he had the reputation for being a bigger puncher than Hergovich before Zhang fights. And now people don't look at it quite that way anymore. So I think... You know, you could say Vladimir Klitschko. Um, you could maybe say Ruiz, but I, but I just personally think Philip Hergovich is the most destructive punch puncher Anthony Joshua has fought in his career, and that's just my opinion from what I, from what I know about their careers, common opponents, things like that. It's how I feel. And then last but not least, which is going to be his ultimate undoing, Hergovich is the most experienced heavyweight Anthony Joshua has fought since. And I, you know, I probably should have, I probably should have put Usyk because Usyk's pretty damn experienced. But I would say apart from Usyk and Klitschko. Um, no heavyweight that Anthony Joshua has fought, um, you know, will be as experienced as Philip Hargovich because this is a guy that, you know, if we just check under the hood, let, let, let's check under the hood real quick, right? Because let me see. And mind you, one, one, hold on, actually, hold on. Let, let me go back one more time. Let me go, let me, let me go back to my, my fourth point. Before I go back to point five, there's one point, there's one part that I missed about Hargovich as a puncher. I'm sorry, guys. I'm all over the place, but I, I, I gotta make this known because people don't understand. They don't understand. So, look, Rydell Booker, right, another guy Hergovich fought. This guy had 35 fights in his pro career. Now, Booker, good veteran, been around the block. You see he's fought guys like Otto Valin, Stephen Shaw. They couldn't get him out of there, right? Fought Jermaine Franklin. He couldn't get him out of there. Fought Kurek Pulev, who's a good puncher. He couldn't get him out of there, right? And then he fought James Tony in 2004, all right? Now, James Tony at heavyweight was a – was he wasn't, you know, he wasn't Mike Tyson, but he fought a pretty damn good version of James Tony, right? He fought the he fought James Tony right out of James Tony school and stopped Evander Holyfield. So literally, he Booker fights Tony coming right off the Holyfield fight. Um, two fights removed from the Vasily Jirov fight, which is arguably the best performance of his career. And he it wasn't a competitive fight. And Booker did get dropped in the eighth round, but he didn't get stopped. And he showed back then, although that was a long, long time ago, he was durable. Now, to be fair, Hergovich did fight him when he was old, but even when he was old. Guys like Valine and Stephen Shaw, who are, who, are, who are talented heavyweights, they couldn't stop Ryder Booker. So that shows you the kind of punching power and the kind of experience that Hergovich has to get a guy, get a kind of guy like Ryder Booker out of there. So I just want to make that last point. But um, back to this. Hergovich is the most experienced heavyweight Joshua's fought since, I'll say, Klitschko and, and obviously Usyk. He's up there with both those guys as the most experienced heavyweight he's ever fought. Now, if you look at his, um, his resume... As far as his amateur exploits, we know, first of all, Hergovich was in the Klitschko camp. He sparred, you know, uh, uh, Deontay Wilder, uh, Vladimir Klitschko, David Hay. Um, I know down here in South Florida, he sparred uh, Lorenzo Medina. He sparred a lot, a lot of guys. I know he sparred Jerome Miller before. Um, you know, bronze medalist in the 2000, uh, what is it, 16 Olympics, you know, um, you know, world amateur championships fought there, fought and fought in the world amateur championships. What is it? Three times, you know, 2011, 2013, 2015. Also fought in the uh, youth world amateur championships, 2010, European championships. I mean, he's 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 very, very, very decorated as an amateur, very experienced as an amateur, um, fought the who's who of, you know, heavyweights for, for amateurs. And so. This is where, you know, like all these guys like Franklin and and and, and Hellenius and, you know, if you just look at the guys that her, if you look at the guys Anthony Joshua's fought that had equal to or greater amateur experience than him, for the most part, he always loses. I mean, uh, Klitschko's an exception, but Klitschko, I mean, Klitschko was a little older, but Klitschko's an exception. But like Usyk, even Andy Reeves was was one of the more experienced amateurs in the heavyweight division, and he wasn't able to uh, really do anything with him, so... Yeah, I mean, Klitschko, Pulev, these are guys he had success against that did have great amateur careers. But I'm talking about as far as the guys that were were young, were at a good age in heavyweight boxing, that were young, fresh. You know, Anthony Joshua wasn't really able to get over the hump against those guys. So in closing, and I know I'm 20 minutes in, but I had to really get, get this out there. Anthony Joshua is not being Philip Hergovich quite simply because Philip Hergovich is um, – he's an elite knockout puncher. 
He is the more well-conditioned fighter. He has equal to and or greater experience, Anthony Joshua. And when, when you boil it down to the to the simplest common denominator, Philip Hergovich is just tougher than Anthony Joshua. He's tougher than him. When, when shit gets hot in that ring, he knows how to handle himself and behave like a fighter better than AJ does. And that's not to put AJ down. I like AJ. Anthony Joshua is a real fighter who's who's always been willing to take on all comers. So I'm hoping he takes this fight. And I'm hoping he doesn't try to go fight Francis Ngannou or Deontay Wilder. And if, and, I, and I hope he's serious about what, what he said about wanting to be champion again. Because I'll tell you this. If Anthony Joshua, at this stage of his career, at 34 years old, you know, where he's closer to retirement than he is his prime, if he's able to beat um, a, a motivated, dangerous, undefeated uh, challenger like Philip Herbert to become three-time heavyweight champion of the world, then at that point, he's a solidified, in my opinion, first battle Hall of Famer. And I have to sit here and shut up and really just be in awe and give all, give all the credit in the world to him. But ultimately, I think when push comes to shove and they do fight, there's going to be a heavyweight champion. And he's going to be from Zagreb, Croatia. And his name is Philip Animo Hergovic. So. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you guys think of uh, Philip Hergovich versus Anthony Joshua? Am I alone? Am I alone on this? Like, do, do any of my points make sense to you guys? Like, is is there anybody out there in the world that's not from Croatia? Apart from the Croatians, is there anybody out there that's not from Croatia that thinks that Philip Hergovich will defeat Anthony Joshua when they fight? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just getting from being it. So until next time, take your guys.